Satan. We have come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and their communion in the Spirit be with each of you this morning. <clears throat> Just to say that today is Tuesday of the fifth week of Lent. The readings today are focusing on the cross, the centrality of the cross in our own lives and in the life of the Lord Jesus as well. As we begin, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, for our sake, you suffered death to the point of death on the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were open to God's will in all things, even to the point of death. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our lives the people dedicated to your service may grow both merit in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The Word of the Lord. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generations to come and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer let my cry come to you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower, and all who come to him will live. Glory and praise to you, Lord mighty God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, he is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. 
So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then, will you, then you will realize that I am, that I do nothing on my own, but I only see what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, our first reading is quite extraordinary in the sense that the people are, are healed by looking at the symbol that poisoned them. However, all of this points to the cross of the Lord Jesus. And the cross is central in, obviously, the Lord Jesus' life, meant to be central in our lives as well. It tells us a whole lot about sin and grace, a whole lot about hate and love. It tells a lot about many things. I would suggest just a few things about the cross that are important. When you look upon the cross, you see uh, an innocent man who was brutally murdered. A man good in every single way, in all things, he was brutally murdered. And so what you see there is the ultimate clash of good and evil. And when you look at the cross initially, you see, however, how it is that evil triumphed over good. Fortunately for us, however, that is not the end of the story. Easter comes, the Lord is resurrected, and so eventually good triumphs over evil. But for good to triumph over evil, however, it takes divine intervention. For us, never to underestimate the power of evil. The second thing that I would say to you about the cross is, Jesus was open to God's will in everything in absolutely everything. And so it was, however, that if it entailed the cross as well, so be it. There is a lot of suffering in the world, a whole lot of suffering, as indeed we well know. Jesus suffered greatly, obviously, in the occasion of the crucifixion as well, mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, in every which way that Jesus suffered terribly. And in the suffering that he endured on the cross, he shows his solidarity with us that truly he stands with us in the midst of all of this, as well in all of this suffering. The cross, obviously, also as well, is important in the sense that it tells us of, of Jesus, his extraordinary goodness, his openness to, God will, to God's will, and also as well, challenging us to be open to God's will as best we understand it, even in our own lives as well. It was the defining moment in his life among us, and certainly also as well, we're meant also as well to embrace the cross in our own lives as best we can. With that said, the cross is significant in many ways. It shows us the Lord's love for us, his extraordinary goodness, his total uh, adherence and devotion and obedience to God's will in every which way, his extraordinary profound trust. And that trust, obviously, as well, he gives to us too. Let us be mindful of his extraordinary goodness, his love for us, also as well that Jesus came, not at all to change God's mind about us. That did not change, that did not need changing. He came, however, to change our minds about God, his extraordinary goodness and love for us, and indeed to change our minds about ourselves as well, how we are very precious to him in all things. I would suggest to you two things, that one is that you have the cross somewhere in a significant place in your own home that you look upon it many times as well, not just as you take it for granted, but mindful of the Lord's extraordinary goodness. Secondly, I would suggest to you that when we make the sign of the cross, we do so deliberately, recalling that we are called to share in the Lord Jesus' very life and his death and ultimate resurrection as well. Amen. Let us pray that we, the Church, may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders, government leaders and others may be empowered by the Holy Spirit in serving their people as Christ came to serve, we pray to the Lord. That those who have turned from God may receive from him the grace of conversion, we pray to the Lord. That this Lenten season may be a time of growing in the gifts that God has given us, we pray to the Lord. We pray as well for all of us that we be mindful of this pandemic, mindful of the Lord's presence with us, that he has not abandoned us, we pray to the Lord. Help us as best we can in all things to be supportive of one another, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died, that they may be united with Christ in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Let us for a moment pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord our God, mindful of your extraordinary goodness and love that you particularly demonstrate for us on the cross, help us to respond to your love in every single way in our own lives. We pray this in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. From your hands. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed as the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and ministered to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to exchange Christ's peace with each other. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Again, just to assure you that we are very much with you in spirit and in prayer as well. In any way we can be remotely helpful, certainly feel free to call us. You're most welcome to do so as well. But we're truly with you in prayer. and We hope that you're holding up well. With that in mind, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended.